Good morning, children. Welcome, children, to the first session of Chapter Three, Fiber to Fabric. Now let's see. Here, you need to know animal fibers. The common animal fibers are wool and silk. Wool is obtained from sheep, goat, yak, camel, llama, alpaca, etc. Silk is obtained from silk worm. So now you will see a different breed of sheep over here in this picture. Goat, a different breed of goat. Yak, camel. So here also you can see a different breed of camels. Llama. Ah, uh, llama. They are found in many parts of the European countries. Um, alpaca. Then you will see silkworm, wool. Wool is obtained from the fleece, that is hair of sheep, goat, camel, yak, llama, alpaca, and other animals. These animals have a thick coat of hair on their bodies because the hair traps air, and air is poor conductor of heat. So the hair keeps their body warm. The most common wool is sheep wool. Yak wool is common in Tibet and Ladakh. The wool obtained from the Angora goats of Jammu Kashmir is soft wool, and is used for making shawls. Camel hair is also used as wool. Llama and alpaca found in South America also yield wool. Now these are the points you are going to write in your fair notebook very neatly. Next, you are going to make points on this from fibers to wool. Now, we will see for obtaining wool, sheep are reared and then their hair is cut and processed into wool. Rearing and breeding of sheep. Sheep are reared in many parts of our country like Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Uttaranchal, Sikkim, Arunachal Pradesh, Haryana, Punjab, Rajasthan, Gujarat, etc. Sheep feed on grass and leaves. They are also fed with a mixture of pulses, corn, jowar, oil cakes, and minerals. In winter, sheep are kept indoors and fed on leaves, grain, and dry fodder. Some breeds of sheep have thick hair on their body, which yield good quality of wool in large quantities. They are selectively bred to get sheep of good breed. So these points you are going to write in your fair notebook. Next, processing fibers into wool. The processing of fibers into wool is done in six steps. So you are going to make a note of all these six steps in your fair notebook. The fleece hair of the sheep is removed from its body along with a thin layer of skin by using machine. This process is called shearing. So the first point you are going to make on shearing, removal of hair with the help of machine from the body of the sheep is called as shearing. Next, the sheared skin with hair is washed in tank to remove grease, dirt, and dust. This process is called scoring. So the next process scoring. Again, you are going to make this point in your notebook. Third point: the hairy skin is sent to a factory where hairs of different textures are separated. This process is called sorting. So, in a sorting process, again you are going to write in your notebook. Fourth uh, point here: the small fluffy fibers called burrs are separated from the hairs and again washed and dried. The fibers are then dyed in different colors. The fibers are then straightened, combed, and rolled. Into yarn, they are then spun into woven and woven into fabric. Now all these points you are going to write very neatly in your notebook. Obtaining wool. See how the person is cutting the wool of from a sheep and with the help of a machine. This is a special machine to cut hair. That is a uh, wool. Uh, and this is how you obtain wool from sheep, and it 
very neatly it cuts now these are the threads of wool and you can see a fabric made up of wool fiber so it is then uh, the thread is woven into a fiber and then finally to fabric now some indian breeds of sheep you can see in this table you have to make this table in your fair notebook so the table goes like this name of breed you have lohi and quality of wool which you get that is a good quality of wool and state where it is found rajasthan punjab next breed you will have rampur busher where a uh, quality of wool is called as brown fleece and state where it is found uttar pradesh himachal pradesh next you will see over here you will uh, see nali where a uh, quality of wool is for car it's a carpet wool and state where it is found rajasthan haryana punjab next you will have uh, uh, bakawal and uh, it is quality of wool is for wool and shawl and state where it is found you will have over here jambu and kashmir and then marwari you will have coarse wool the type of wool the quality of wool is a coarse wool and state where it is found gujarat then patanwadi will be the next name of the breed and uh, it is used for hosiery and where it is found in the state of gujarat so this table should be neatly done in your notebook next you will have an activity you can try this at home procure outline maps of india and the world find out and mark the places on the map where you find animals that provide wool that use different colors to denote the location for different wool building animals so this activity you can try at home it's an interesting activity children what is the occupational hazard of working in wool industry there there are some occupational hazard of people for people working in this industry let us see wool industry is an important means of livelihood for many people in our country but sorter's job is risky as sometimes they get infected by bacterium anthrax which causes a fatal blood disease all sorters this is highly infectious disease such risk faced by workers in any industries are called occupational hazard so there is occupational hazard so people have to be careful who are working in this industry uh, to do take care of themselves because um, this have an occupational hazard after this you are going to watch a video on how wool is obtained from sheep and then converted into fibers to fabric <laughs>
And we kind of pick through the fleeces, take off the edges, and the, we skirt the fleeces. And then they'll go into bags with their name or number on them. And then at some point, they will be spun. I'll do two washings, and then I'll do two rinses. I wash them in very hot water with soap twice. And then I let, it, let the fleece sit there, and it floats pretty freely. I don't pack it in. And then I will squeeze the water out and lay it out to dry. Carding this kind of wool, this Lester long wool is a six to nine inch staple length. So you usually would card this so that the fibers are just straight and laid out. I spin it worsted style, so it's just spun by pulling the fiber out and twisting it, rather than woolen style where it's rolled up into a spiral and then pulled. For me to spin, I spin on a, on a Saxony wheel. You know, it, spinning is just a very personal thing. There's lots of variation in the way it looks. It can be very, very uniform and precise. It can be thick, it can be thin, and it can be both all in the same strand. There's lots of different, you know, it's as different as, as people. There were two spinners in every household at one point in history. Everybody learned to spin. They would sit by the fire and the little girls would spin. And that was part of the family work. I don't do much spinning anymore because when I have 200 pounds of fleece, it's easier for me since that's not the part I love. So I move on to the step of sending it to a mill now that I have a local mill. been such a, a renaissance of the whole fiber tradition, particularly on the East Coast, that the mills have sprung up all over. And this is a wonderful thing because you can have the sheep shorn on Saturday and take the wool to the mill on Monday to be spun. When I first started, I think I got my yarn in six weeks and now you might wait three months. You can have it spun into cone and placed on cones, or you can have it spun into skeins, which can be whatever size you want. Um, I have four ounce skeins. You can have eight ounce skeins. You know, they're pretty custom about what they'll do for you. Spinning, it turns it into yarn as opposed to unspun fiber, it turns it into a thread. When I dye wool, I have, to, I have to get my mindset ready. I have to think about spring colors or fall colors. And then I have to clean everything else out of my life. And usually it's a day when no one else is around because when you're dyeing wool, you can't do anything else. You can't think about anything else because there, it's such a, uh, an involved process and you have to keep it moving. I start with the water, I get the water hot, I add salt to the water, and then they will stay in the dye pot. For me, I do around a half an hour in the dye and then I'll add vinegar as my mordant. Mordant makes the cell of the fiber open up and accept the dye. And when the yarn has absorbed all the dye that's in the water. I carefully take the wool out of the water and I put it in a sink and I rinse it. And I'll s gently squeeze the water out and I hang it out to dry.
So if a scarf is 70 inches long, I know that you need a yard and a half of loom weight. So that's roughly three and a half yards. Then you measure the warp, and you have to figure out how many threads you want per inch. So there's a little more math, lots of math here. And say, if it's eight inches wide, and I'm doing eight to the inch, 64 threads, three and a half yards long. So I use a warping reel, and I have planned out a guide string that tells me when I have three and a half yards. Then I dress the loom. It's called dressing the loom. I spread them out on the front beam or the breast beam, and I will put the threads through the slots in the reed. And then they go through the heddles, which the heddle frames raise and lower the harnesses so that you can have your basic over-under pattern. And then I tie onto the back of the loom. And then I wind the warp onto the loom and tie it in the front, tension it, and begin to weave. The warp is what you put on the loom, and the weft, or woof, is the part that you weave. Weaving actually is the easiest part of the whole process. Once you have it all set up in your mind, it becomes very rhythmic if you're doing a simple pattern. What we call plain weave is just very pleasant, pleasurable to weave. There's one treadle for a harness. And so when you push down the treadle, it raises whatever harness you've assigned it to. You have 16 treadles and eight harnesses on my loom. So you have a lot of variations in what you can raise and lower. You can have a color pattern that's just changing, changing the threads, but you can also have a pattern that's constructed by the raising and lowering specific harnesses. No amount of money is worth what I just put into it. You know, they're kind of like your children. You don't necessarily want to let them go, and it's very difficult to price things. I try to think that it's all about the learning, and if I'm having fun making it and somebody's willing to give me money for it, that's okay.
I like it, I guess, because it's very of the earth. I guess I could grow up and live in an apartment and, and not have a farm and be able to come and go as I wanted. But when you have a farm, you know, you have a lifetime of creativity that you put into this place. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a very different magnitude of investment. It's kind of nice to sit here, like in the winter, when the fire's going and it's snowing and I can see the sheep. It just brings it full circle. Thank you, children. Have a nice day.